Uh, thank you guys for coming on a Friday 8 a.m. class, especially the week before uh, fall break. Today we will go ahead and discuss about the paper writing workshop, uh, about the project proposal, the midterm review, as well as the final pro final work that we will be presenting. Uh, this is me and Pavitra. But so basically, your uh, report will have the original research you have done over the semester. And it, your report would generally include what you've done new and your statement about the problem and the pros and cons and the conclusion and results. So you would start your project mainly by a literature review because to know which domain you want to work in. So you would see the relevant papers online and read about them to know what your interests lie in. And then you would do like keyword searching to know <clears throat> the specific keywords which are in which are uh, in your field. And then you would decide what topic you want to pursue and then do brainstorming in your team to generate ideas about the same. So your project proposal, your project report can be written as a research paper as well in the end, if you want to give it for publishing and if you think that um, your uh, project is a novel project or like you've done something different and the standard format for a paper would be these like the title authors abstract introduction literature review methods result discussion conclusion future work and references so <clears throat> the first one would be the titles that's the authors and use very less words here and also you'll be adding uh, keywords and consider the keywords which you would be wanting to, like if someone has to search for a particular topic, what keywords would matter the most. And uh, your title should be, uh, should capture what your project wants to tell. And also the authors are generally in order of who's uh, written the most, but it's like up to you. Generally who writes most gets the first preference. So section zero is abstract. It's basically the summary of your uh, whole project and it's generally written in the end because you then clearly know what's happening. But uh, it should not be more than 250 words and it's just a single paragraph and it does not have any sightings. It's just a summarization of your entire uh, research. Next is introduction. So this will be more in depth about what your topic is and a clear problem statement about the same. Here you would, <coughs> Propose the solution of what you want to do and your understanding and terminology and the basics about your project. Section two is the prior art or the literature review. So this is what you would start with as well. Like you would be performing a lot of literature review to know what you want to work in. So it, it might not be a new problem, but uh, <clears throat> your motivation of why you're doing that and how you led to that is mainly what literature review is. And Basically, what were the earlier problems? How was it being tackled? What do you want to like? In the end, you would uh, summarize by what you are doing, etc. So after you have done the literature review, you'll be having an idea of what area you want to work on and what are the base that are already there, what is the state of art, and what are different kind of architecture, different methodologies, other paper have papers have worked on. So you'll have an idea of what to work on. And once you have an idea of what you want to work on, what are the new contributions that you want to make, and you need to include that part in the paper in the proposed solution uh, methodology. Uh, try to be very succinct, try to be very clear, exact specific points, uh, what is your contribution. And uh, especially, I mean, initially you'll be writing a project proposal. You don't need to write uh, uh, what is your contribution because you haven't paid any contribution yet. So. Uh, for the project proposal and maybe the midterm, uh, I mean, I mean, for the project proposal, mention what would be your hypothesized uh, contribution, and for the midterm report, mention what is your progress till now, uh, and finally, in the final report, you have to mention what is your con contribution and what was the, uh, what are the new new things that you actually got into your work. So yeah. So the proposed solution should include uh, a very basic introduction with the high, uh, preferably like three or four bullet points saying that what is uh, what is a high level concept 
and the uh, and your contribution. Then uh, go for the technical details, include diagrams of your architecture, uh, include uh, uh, yeah. Uh, go to the implementation details uh, in this proposed solution paragraph. Uh, yeah, and in the proposed solution for this for the for the purpose of the course, you want to guys to work on one baseline, uh, and this baseline need not always be a a state of the art solution. So this is a very very common question you always get uh, being a TA mentor that should the baseline be the state of art whatever is being. Uh, tried out right now. So the, the baseline need not be the SOTA that is already there, but it should be something that is pretty much comparable with the SOTA. The reason why we don't want you to be like uh, focused specifically for SOTA because very often the state of the art model has a lot of details, a lot of intricacies that, that will take the model to that particular accuracy. So if implementing that requires you a lot of compute power and if uh, Evaluating even that requires a lot of my lot of coding or something like that, and sometimes if you don't find enough uh, resources online, it's fine that you don't uh, implement the SOTA paper. But something that is comparable to the SOTA, that if the metrics are very uh, close to the SOTA, uh, you can choose that particular baseline and uh, implement it, get the get the results, uh, and you should be able to uh, uh, get some reasonable. Uh, metrics out of this baseline model. So yeah, uh, so a baseline model should be pretty much competitive as I just said. And uh, yeah, so the goal is to make sure that the baseline is valid and uh, whatever you are proposing is building uh, onto it. So you you have a you have a model that you can uh, judge your model against. So yeah. So next is the experimental validation. So yeah. So once you are done with your uh, experiments, uh, you need to add your uh, the results of the experiment in one particular slide. I mean slide or uh, I mean when it comes to project for one particular section. So include all the graphs. Uh, include all the tables, all the metrics, all the uh, yeah, so all the results that you have got. But you know, uh, you don't necessarily need to analyze your result here. You just need to uh, kind of compare your your metrics alongside with the baseline and uh, add that into the section. So next we'll go and discuss in the analysis part like what what you know you need to analyze analyze. But for the sake of validation, you, uh, for the sake of experimental validation, include uh, like all the all the facts uh, that you have got out of your experiments. So next comes the analysis. So you would have come up with a hypothesis saying that what would be the what would be the final result and what would be your possible contribution for uh, this particular problem. So this is a part where you also need to dwell deep into uh, what happened and where your result actually matching with the hypothesis. If not, uh, why it did not, and uh, what are the new findings that you came up came across while working on these experiments, and come up with the uh, come up with the kind of reasoning that why do you think uh, it happened? The the results came the way. Uh, the way it came. Yeah. And finally, uh, yeah, uh, for, for this entire project, you'll, you'll be having like one month of total time. You won't have like uh, all the time to try out all possible combinations and all possible ideas that you have. So uh, once you're done with all your results, come up with a conclusion, finally uh, discuss about what are the possible future work that can uh, build upon what your result, well, the results that you have got, and include that part in the conclusions and future work. So yeah, some basic guidelines. Uh, though the the peer review and uh, the work, the your report will be read by your peers as well as the TAs who are, who have significant technical background. 
don't kind of assume that they are very good at the specific area that you that you are working on. Just make sure it's pretty much it's kind of uh, give enough non-technical background uh, in your abstract and introduction so that uh, someone with very basic deep learning understanding or somebody who is in math or, or some other departments in computer science must be able to read and understand uh, your paper as well as quickly understand uh, your contribution that you have done to the field. So, yeah, and uh, wherever possible, uh, try to uh, succinctly include a lot of details. I mean, this is a kind of art. You will, I mean, that's the reason we have like multiple uh, stages. You will have one, uh, you will have one, Yeah, you'll have one project proposal, midterm report, and final final project. By the end of final project, you should be you should have a good idea uh, how to succinctly add uh, the details of your entire model uh, within a short amount of paragraphs. So yeah, uh, whether you're using some previously uh, you previously published work uh, or some previous models, then uh, Cite it, but don't just mention in just like one line saying that, hey, we use this particular thing, this particular from this GitHub source, and just put this in. Just add a couple of more lines. Uh, you don't need to do this for literature survey. Uh, you don't need to like explain every single model, you know, explain important models when it comes to literature survey. But when you, if you're using a particular model in your uh, work, then make sure that you do include some good enough details about that paper in your work. So your paper should be technically self-contained. Yeah. So finally, when it comes to references, uh, you can use uh, any any standard format that are that are there. So one of them is APA, and most of the time, I mean, uh, most of the time you'll be using the NeurIPS. Uh, the new risk template that we have provided you and uh, may just make sure that you go through how to cite using web text uh, just citing directly would be like extremely painful and you might miss out or do have a, have some duplicate citations uh, which might cause unnecessary problems while searching for papers yeah so technically your citation should contain the author names the title of the paper the year it got published and then the publication it got published as well as the yeah so the publication it got published. Uh, here are some example sources where you can find uh, a good paper and uh, which are which are kind of pretty much similar um, which has a sim which kind of meet the similar expectations of this course project uh, presentations. And uh, finally, yeah. Oh. You, you want to say something? No, no, about peer review. Cool. So when it comes to peer review, uh, at most fifty percent of marks will be uh, will be graded by your peers. Each paper paper each presentation as well as your final project will be handed over to five or uh, five different students of the class, and they will read your paper, watch your videos, and. Uh, grade you from the scale of one to five in these particular questions. So your paper should technically cover all these things. Uh, so does the author, so do, so, your, so do you make it clear if the problem that you're solving is theoretical or an applied science, applied problem? And uh, if you, if you have done enough literature survey, uh, whether you have done it in our literature survey or not. And, and these both points should be uh, should be covered in the abstract and introduction if you have uh, if you've done it clearly. And yeah, and the third one which we want to we evaluate is like is the is your model that you have proposed is uh, clear or not? And the uh, and how how is your evaluation process? Have you included enough feasible uh, metrics related to your particular field. Uh, that's also an important task. Uh, we find a lot of people uh, 
lot of teams which work on a project, they're very excited for a month. And by the end of the result, end of the project, you might have got some good enough result. Uh, say, if you're working on something like music generation, you would have got a lot of uh, good enough music, say, good enough uh, music which will play good, but just demonstrating it on a, on a demonstrating it to people, saying that, okay, we produce some good music doesn't really uh, give us a way to judge what was your contribution. So what we want is like, we want you to come up with some good enough metrics in your uh, particular field. Say, for example, if you're working on something like language fluency, you have like BART score. You, if you're working on some CNNs, you have, say, uh, maybe the accuracy. So each, each and every problem has their own specific metrics that are very useful for the, to evaluate that particular problem. So make sure you're very clear about that and include those two metrics in, in your paper. I mean, you can present, during the presentation, you can present it the way you want. If you want to have some videos, that's fine. If you want to have a project demo on a website, that is still cool. Uh, but make sure you include the evaluation very clearly. Uh, is the process of training clear? <laughs> and can it be reproduced? Uh, this is also an important one. If It's a plus point if you can make your code open source at the end of the project after the deadlines are done, the deadlines are over. Uh, so if you, if, you can, if you can just make sure that your entire uh, code base is more reproducible, uh, or even if you uh, even if you have done a lot of tricks in between, let's say, or uh, say stopping the model early, just like how you do it for your homeworks, if you have, uh, say, done a lot of manual work uh, while you're training, then please include that aspects as well as that, that, that aspects in your report as well. Yeah. So, so next question is like, uh, do you do enough, good enough job in experimenting with different specifications? Um, so, have you tried out different architectures? Have you tried out different uh, ways to check if your hypothesis works or not? I mean, this is especially very, very clear if you, if you, if your work doesn't uh, beat the state of the art model, then. Uh, you need to come up with an idea saying that, hey, uh, we tried this, this, and this. Uh, these are the results that we got, and this is why it's not working. We want you to kind of explain in detail what are the experiments that you have already done, and uh, come up with your own understanding saying that, hey, why your work probably did not work. Uh, and and the reasoning should be very clear along with the metrics. Say, for example, if the state of the art metrics is say, let's say 86% and you're getting say 82, and you have a graph which says, which shows that your validation accuracy uh, is saturating, or if you have an attention map which says, okay, you're not, you're not able to clearly come up with a uh, good attention vector, which is correctly mapping the input and output. If you come up with such visual as well as uh, uh, as well as hypothesis, as well as kind of analysis, which is based on the metrics, that's much, much better than just saying that, hey, uh, we tried all these things and it didn't work. So just make sure, I mean, this is very, this is very true when your model doesn't beat the shit of art. If you beat the shit of art, then it's great. Uh, just explain everything. Uh, maybe you'll get a paper published, that's great. But if it doesn't, and if you, if it doesn't, then just make sure you include uh, all these parts here. And possibly also come up with a hypothesis saying that, hey, uh, we, we tried all these things and it did not work. Maybe this was the reason. And come on, uh, we, we can, uh, the future works, the possible future works that you want to uh, work on, uh, if you want to improve upon this. So finally, yeah, the last, the last question, that will be that that will use to evaluate you guys is like uh, have you how was your uh, implementation trying to solve the problem statement uh, yeah 
So that is all about the grading part. Uh, so this is about the project presentation and if you have any doubts, you have any questions, you can ask. So while you are grading as well, keep these questions in mind when you would be grading on the peer review, like you would also be assigned a few projects to go through. So keep these in mind and then like you, then it will be easier for you to like break down and give a review. Yeah, I mean, you will be asked to fill out a form which will have all these questions. So, yeah. Now that you can skip these questions. Uh, do you have any questions in class or on Zoom? Have, have you guys all finished your project proposal? Almost okay. Almost okay. Yeah, if, uh, if there are no questions, then we are done for the presentation. Uh, do you have any questions on Zoom? Hello? Sure, uh, maybe we can turn off the zoom and then take it offline. On the side of the zoom? Yeah, uh, I just did that. Okay. Okay, stop recording then. Oh, sure, yeah.